You all right? Yeah, shout out to you, bro. Always keeping it real, you know? Keeping the people woke. Well, huh? might as well add on to that real quick. A little something for you and your, and your um, viewers. You know, since they just been um, keeping it a hundred. Y'all saw, let me ask you something. They be claiming they apes. If they really gorillas then, how come Zimmerman still walking around and they none of them get at them? Separation is reparation and it's affirmation. Case closed, no investigation. It is what it is, no explanation. Y'all over there praying like y'all gonna be saved. We ain't one in the same. He a field nigga, he a house nigga. Me, I'm the runaway slave. I'd rather be under the grave than under a man that come from a cave. So I'm off to get guns and grenades, but I'll be back in a couple of days. Yeah, I'm on my Django, like Jamie Foxx. Sharpshooter when I aim these shots They like, here come the pigs And I'm like, good, cause I came for the cops I bang on my opposition Hip-hop's been glitching since Pac's been missing That's why none of y'all got my attention It's repetition, I ain't gotta listen Cause I already know what it is Y'all flow gon' be flowing like this Talking about how you're ruling the bins I know how it's starting, I know how it ends Wait, ain't you married? How you rapping about all the moves you got? And the clothes you rock with, you need to stop Cause nigga, those ain't hot Man, y'all tripping. Got these Chinese niggas frying y'all chicken. And they don't even look like chicken. Fuck around and it's probably a pigeon. God forgive them. They don't know no better. They probably a Christian, a Muslim, a hoodlum. To, to the, the system, system it's no difference. I don't understand it. How you blacker than me talking about you Hispanic? Spanish a language. We the same dishes. Your mind's been damaged. Where that's Nadie? Tu ta flutiando. I'm from the calle. They call it like Kanye. But I'm on that shit they don't teach you in John Jeff. I'm criminal minded. You can tell I'm a dawn by the women I ain't with. I maneuver like Heimlich. But the pressure on the stomach come from my nine inch. Y'all probably ain't catching. So be wind in that part is highly suggested. I'm possessed because my women possessive. I'm blessed. And this is a blessing. You niggas gonna learn today. This is a lesson. Go in the church and gonna get you in heaven. Nigga, your rebel's a felony. Taking your money and swelling your melon. Yeah, I'm a rebel. That's why I'm rebelling. Somebody gotta say it. So I'm a tell had knowledge yourself since I was 11 and taught my son by the time he was seven. I'm the best man, though I'm not at your wedding. I helped them get on, they ain't gotta get credit. I'm tipsy, off a of nipsy, I'm a hustle. Until I get it, I see where y'all going, that's not where I'm headed. I'm taking a different direction, so no, we can't do a record. And just for the record, I actually feel disrespected for you even thinking. I would be shaking down on your level, clown, you a pebble. Trying to smell what the rock is cooking Cause you heard I said I'm shop in Brooklyn But it's still BX to the death of me They got ingredients, I got the recipe I hope you die in your sleep That goes for all my foes that ever slept on me Niggas, they won't <laughs> I don't give a fuck what you niggas wanna hear This is what you need this to what hear the fuck you need to hear <laughs> Stay woke Huh? I said No time for sleeping, the enemy creeping And we can't defeat them unless we stay woke This is a dirty game, man. <laughs> Max Dollars, we see you playing game, YouTube. Yeah, we see, man. They don't want y'all to see that. Them dudes that they picked, they, they, they gave a, 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 a million dollars worth of game. They don't want y'all to see that I'm on the same level as them dudes. So they got to sit up there and do everything in their power to make my numbers lower than what they are. Y'all already see it. Y'all see it. Game ugly. See when I sit up there and and, and and I own I take my 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 my, my lives and I I let y'all know ahead of time that I'm going live then what happens is more people see and y'all set the time like yeah I'll be there waiting because they not sending the notifications out because they dumbing the nigga down so now every time I sit up there and or do a pre do a pre live they making it hard for me to come in the live. Last time, last night, they shut my live down twice. Back to back, shut my live down. But it is what it is. We already know what time it is. Like we 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 playing on their platform. This ain't our platform. That's why we gotta get our platform. Give me a second, people. Cause I got a lot to say. And now when they start freezing my screen and I leave out of YouTube and I come back in. Well, introducing the, oh, the non-lethal self. Shut up. 
When I go back out and I come back in, pfft, forget about it. Now what they do is they stop my whole life and I can't go back in it. Because when I go out and I come back in, when I come back in, it sends it's it, it, it sends something out to the YouTubers. Well, YouTubers, well, my numbers go back to their proper numbers. So now they stop me from going out and coming back in when they messing with my screen. If I go out, whatever my live is, if I go out, I can't come back again. They deliberately did that. The FBI, whoever the FBI, CIA behind YouTube, they deliberately did that because it shows my true numbers when I come back in. Shit, grimy. Shout out to the 1,300 people in the building. Yeah, the door just opened. Y'all nosy. <laughs> Listening to my alarm system in my house. Hopefully, we can continue on with this live. Y'all ready, y'all? He's the one that got the actual confession, and that, that played a big role in it. But for me, I laid out the whole story from beginning to end in a, whatever, three-hour video that told everything before, during, and after. Right. And now, four years later, um, he actually got arrested. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised? And I had to go to the streets for this and my crew, <laughs> you know. Um, I called my crew up. I, all, all my crew's old heads. We all rocked together, keepy, my um, zip people. Mm -hmm. And we talked. And what our people have said about is we had certain rules coming up. And the rules is we shut the fuck up. Yeah. What everybody's upset needs some real hit bangers. They like, they upset with Keefe a little. Because what they're saying is why you put these glasses on, you get this hat for attention and you talked your way into prison at the age that you are like, this is something you're supposed to take to the grave and keep your mouth shut. And, and, and we talked about it for a good 45 minutes the other day. And, um, it, it, I'm, conf I'm hurt on so many ways, right? I'm hurt that Tupac yeah. died. Loved him. Thought he was an amazing guy. I understand Keefe because Keefe associated with some of my people. And as the years go on, we see each other, we shake hands. 
Wait, have you met Keefe in person? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah really? Yeah, we know all of us know all of us. Yeah. How many times you met Keefe? How many times you met Keefe? Listen to the district attorney and Vlad coming out. This is the blueprint for the district attorney. This is the blueprint for the FBI. Vlad knew exactly what he was doing. But I'm glad in the beginning of this live, he took responsibility in saying that he cracked this case. And indirectly throughout the years, and indirectly, directly and indirectly, this is what Vlad been doing. Are you not entertained? It's over 10, 15 10, 10 15 times. Yeah. Oh, okay, a bunch of times. Yeah, a bunch of times. Y'all talking. Mean, you told you that I, me and Zip was roommates. No, you told me that. No, Zip, you called me and said, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you said, T, um, you and Zip used to be roommates. Bro, so someone... Keep it and tell me that. Oh, it wasn't okay. What's keep? I just got a DM from somebody. Wow, yeah. I didn't know it was a DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That a lot. He just got a DM. No, he ain't just gonna DM from from somebody. He's lying, and TK Kirkland didn't go along with the lie. But you notice Vlad didn't say where he got his info his information from, right? The FBI playing military mind games. Because remember the whole BMF tattoo. Yes, that yes, yes, yes. DM yeah, Okay, yeah. yeah. So me and Zip, um, we owned some property together. So we wasn't really like roommates. We was doing some handling our business together. And I knew about all that. And it just, I'm just confused because I'm conflict on so many issues on this, right? I'm mad at Keefe for talking himself into prison. Like, you wasn't the one who even pulled the trigger, but you're talking like there's something to be talked about. You put yourself into the crime scene. And yes, you put yourself into the crime scene. Oh, 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 let me ask you a question real quick mm -hmm. before you go on. Did Eric Von Zip ever tell you that he knew Keefe? Or have you ever seen the two of them together? We've all been together. Okay, so Eric Von Zip and Keefe 100% know each other. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so so you've just made that connection official. Yeah. It, no, Vlad, you just made that official. And you connected the dots for the FBI, you're doing that work. The work that they didn't want to do. The FBI knew all this information. They knew the police was involved in this killing. There was police officers involved in the murder of Tupac. There was police officers involved in the murder of Biggie. But why now, Sway? Why now, Sway? All of a sudden, we on the brink of World War III. And this is the major distraction. One of the major, major distractions that Vlad is playing a part in. And, and, and it's like I said, man, when you sit back and you really, really analyze this, part of me as a civilian, as a family man, of course you want to know what the hell happened to Tupac. But why now? And being that the whole industry, see, we're going to get to that part right there. The whole industry knew what happened to Pac and Big. And these same rappers that y'all say I'm clout chasing. See, the problem is these glasses, right? This shit right here. These glasses, I get to see what you dumb motherfuckers don't see. So y'all sit up there, oh, he clout chasing. No, I hate the people that you worship. Because I see through them. Jada Kiss wrote a letter to Big. Dun, 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 dun. One of the hottest songs. He wrote a letter to Big. But he sat on, 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 on Nori's drink chap and watched Puffy push, yo, he watched Puffy try to get some ass out of Fab right on camera. I think Puff might be the most gangster nigga left in the industry since Suge left. Pop gone. And he sat up there and pushed up on Fab and tried to get some ass. So when you come into the party, now you see Fab at the party. But y'all not realizing you see Fab at the party. You see Jadakiss taking pictures with Puff. But yet Big and Pac is dead? I need for I need to know from y'all, the audience, how y'all feel about that? How y'all feel about so many people in the industry still performing on stage with Puff, knowing that Big and Pac is gone? Puff had Pac in a slave deal. Puff had Pac in a slave deal. Pac had to sneak to the studio to make songs with Little Kim and Junior Mafia. I mean, Biggie had to sneak. Biggie had to sneak to the studio to make songs with Little C's and Little Kim so he could eat.
Puff been getting multi millions. That's why in the beginning, Jada Kiss and the Locks, when they was on that trying to get off the of bad boys, they were saying, We be raping you, raping you, rape. They named him Raping You Rackets. All this shit correlates. Yeah, we all know each other. Okay. Yeah, is that a problem? Okay, no, yeah. I, I feel you. And Eric Von said for everyone who's like, oh, he's snitching on Eric. No, Eric has passed away. Yeah, it, it's not even snitching. It's just that we hung out. Like, yeah. like I, I, I don't know what happened after we hung out with yeah. this situation, but we all know each other. Like, it's, 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 it's no okay. secret. Okay. Yeah, it's no secret. So, so Keithy saying that he was associating with Eric Von Zip, that's a, 100% true. I heard that story, yes. That's 100% yes. true. You mm -hmm. have personally seen them together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Have you ever seen... But, Vlad, he answered the question already. But you keep asking the question like you crossing there, examining him. Yes, Eric Von Zip is dead. So he's no longer here for the FBI to arrest, but yet you making the connection that the nigga that gave, that Puff gave a million dollars allegedly to, well, you making the connection between him and Keithy D. Vlad, you know what you're doing. We don't even have to ask the question, is Vlad single-handedly trying to be behind the arrest of Pete Diddy Combs? Or is this a CIA operation going on so that P. Diddy could get locked up to keep us distracted during World War III? And because there's not too many witnesses around that could actually link Puff to the case, they can lock him up and then we can have a big trial to distract us. While more and more black people all over the world is going through hell. While bombs are being dropped over there in the Middle East. And I know some of the people over there in the Middle East, they still got slaves. Some of the people over there in the Middle East, they ain't got no love for us. But the reality of it is, it's something about what they doing to them reminds me of what they did to us. It's something about what they're doing to them right now is showing us in history. This is why we don't know who we are as a people. This is why we can't trace back to our ancestors. This is why we call ourselves African-Americans. This is why they play game now. You're starting to see more and more videos of white people telling black people, hey, this was your country. You was already here. When you go over to Africa, they tell you you're not African. You are Native American. You are rebels without a cause because in history, your ancestors was erased the same exact way. This is not the first time that this happened and it won't be the last time. You know why? Because the world don't need another rapper. The world don't need another rapper. We like, do you ever seen a dog running around in the yard chasing his tail? That's you. That's us as a people. Dogs running around chasing their tails. Lost. Lost. Eric Von Zip and Puffy together. They used to hang together all the time. All the time. Yeah. Have you ever seen Keith E. D. and Puffy together? No, never. No. Okay. Never. Got it. Yeah, never. The um um Zip hung out with everybody in Harlem. Yeah. From the guy from Fang, what's the guy, the dancer had the braids? What it is. Roland Johnson, love house and support as always, King. You know what time it is. Not sure what you have to say about, I support you as always, King. Thank you, family, appreciate you. Ray J, yo, Haas, on my, my mobile phone, it shows no live saying video deleted by uploader, but on my computer, it shows you're live on IG, you're live, because what they're doing is they're trying to stop people from coming into my lives. They don't want me ending my lives with 30 and 40,000 people that actually watch my live. So when I go out and I come back in, they knock my whole live out. Kevin MD, yo, Haas, they ghost your channel from me. Yeah. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. Last night we was live. 
for only 24 minutes. The live ended with 10,000, then it jumped to 13,000 after the live ended, of course. Ryan Apple, Peace House, Alphabet YouTube parent company was reported today to be losing money. Also, YouTube as a um, standalone has never made a profit. That's also why they messing with your, your money. Funds is low. Let me tell you something. YouTube is making billions off of content creators off of those commercials. When you go, when, when, well, first of all, when you when you go on when you go on live and you get super chat, the niggas take like sixty percent of that with the taxes. They don't take taxes out of your money, but they take taxes out of your super chat. And then they take their money out of your super chat. So don't believe that, man. You YouTube is not even giving us a 60-40 split. And yes, I am on Rumble. I just got to start being more active over there and start pulling my crowd over there. And shout out to everybody that's been patient and holding me down over there, over there on my Patreon. But I'm having issues uploading on my Patreon too. That's why I haven't been uploading lately. But thank you to everybody that's been over there supporting me on my Patreon. DJ, keep spreading the truth. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. You know, because now Puffy's being dragged into the situation. Yeah, yeah, he goes a lot. Yeah. Fifty Cent has been on stage. Yeah, on it hard. Fifty Cent is going overboard. Yeah. Um, there was an interview where Mo Preem actually said that Puffy called him and denied any involvement. Yeah, in I saw that. Tupac mm -hmm. murder. But, you know, of course, Puffy's going to do. Yeah. I mean, and people have asked me, I was on The Breakfast Club the other day. They're like, you know, do you think that Puffy's going to get arrested? I see it as a virtually 0% chance. Okay. Because at the end of the day, and we've talked about this. Yes, we did. The story that Keefe said was that Puffy called him after the murder and said, mm -hmm. was that us? And he, they said yes. And Puffy allegedly sent him a million dollars. They sent it to Eric Von Zip. Mm -hmm. And the story was that Eric Von Zip kept the money. Right. I'd already bought a nightclub. Right, he did. He did buy yeah. that. <laughs> so that part's true. Yeah, yeah. Cause zip code. Zip code. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go zip code. Yeah. Where was it? Up. Uh, oh, in Harlem. In Harlem. <laughs> Puffy's hometown. Yeah, it had Harlem. And he had, well, not um, Puffy's dad's hometown. Yeah, he had a place up in the Bronx, or another club in the Bronx. <laughs> Money, you know. Do y'all see? Vlad is a master manipulator. Yo, Vlad is a... Yo, do y'all see what I see? Are, are y'all listening? Are you paying attention? The nigga sat up there. Now he connected the dots. So he actually said, okay, what I said previously, right? He said, so basically, he admitted that Ron Zip, Epic Ron Zip, he took the million dollars... He took the million dollars, right? He ran off with the million dollars. So he takes the million dollars. And then what Vlad does is he said, hey, didn't he open up two nightclubs? So now you telling he's leaving a blueprint for the FBI to sit up there and say, hey, well, you know something? This is what Eric Von Zip did with the money. So now we already know that Eric Von Zip, he can't go and show the IRS drug money that he opened up a club. You have to show where the money came from, right? There's no proof where this money comes from, but he took this money from Puff. Now, it's going to show when you go back in date, back in time, somewhere Puff took out a million dollars out of the bank, and that million dollars ended up because there's transactions that happen, even though the truth of the matter is most rich people keep a million dollars in their house. They got that under the bed just because just it feels good to have it. Because they want to just be able to touch it. But y'all already see Vlad, yo, Vlad in true form. Shout out to Vlad for solving Tupac's murder. Shout out to Vlad for helping with this agenda to keep us distracted during the times of World War III. 
Because right now, the reality of it is, what I need y'all to really start paying attention to why they don't want you to hear my voice. Y'all need to watch and pay attention to every single detail, every single jot of what's going on over there in the Middle East. If they did it to them, they'll do it to you. Nope, they did it to you first. As a matter of fact, in history, everybody did it to you. In the black community, everybody was able to come over to our community and take a piss and a shit on us. Everybody. Everybody? Everybody. Everybody did. Study your enemy. Your enemy is studying you. When you log into social media, you hit that like button. Huh? They watching what you like. It's a database. When you hit that share button, they watching what you watching. When you hit that subscribe button, this is how you've been played out of position. Because now you think you're going to be a leader? See, back in the days, leaders was in the cut. They was hiding. They was hiding. See, back in the days, on the, under, the Underground Railroad with Harriet Tubman, she knew that she couldn't walk through the, the plantation like she was Debo. She knew that she had to sneak through the bushes. Now they took you out of the bushes. They put you in the concrete jungle, called the projects, and put cameras dead directly on top of you. So every move you make, every step you take, I'll be watching you, huh? Every move you make, every step you take, they watching, they analyzing. Every ingredient that we put in our body through these foods that we are eating have been sabotaged. Every TV show that made us who we was Martin, Martin, it's a different world, the Cosby show. How do we get from there to Krishan and Blueface? We sitting up there watching DJ Envy, listening to audio. Of him sitting up there telling everybody how he tried to get his Desert Storm family. Yeah, he tried to pull Clue in. He tried to pull Joe Button in to a scam. So we got the radio stations sitting up there analyzing the community. Watching out for people who actually save their income taxes, who save money on the weekends, who ain't at the bar on the weekend, who ain't at the titty bar tipping sluts. Nope. They're at home eating franks and beans so they can move on up like the Jeffersons. And while they sitting up there stashing money, looking for something to invest in, they got DJ Envy on the radio. So now we ain't even hearing no more. Mary J. Blige, what's the 411, hun? What's the 411? You got it going on, yo, I got it going on. Nah, we ain't breaking records like that. Reminisce on the love we had. Nope, we scamming. Ain't no more baby making music. They got back breaking music. Hit them in the head with the... Why you think I made Snapbox TV? These niggas hate me because I keep finding ways around this algorithm. Nah, you can't put in the title. Oh, man was shot 20 times. It's the truth, but it's corny and they not monetizing it. So when I say hit him in the head with this, like, oh, the crowd goes wild. Because that's what we doing in the hood, right? Y'all share this live, man. And if the super chat ain't working, my cash app is dollar sign Hassan Campbell. Y'all already know what time it is. Mm. 
this season. Season is flipping NJ is uh, my partner in right. New Jersey. He owns over sixteen hundred units in New Jersey and all throughout the country. Caesar was in prison before. Caesar was in prison. Caesar wow. was locked up and he learned how to do real estate in prison. In pri- wow. wow. I learned how to do it. So with Caesar, he taught me how to do it the right way. He taught me, you know, why he was like, his first thing is. Yo, I like how Mano said, Mano said, Caesar was in prison before, right? That was the warning, warning, warning. Mano was being slick. Shout out to Mano for that one. Caesar was in prison before, right? Y'all, did y'all not catch that? And listen, I eat, I envy. How he's actually promoting these dudes. Using your money. That's what you mean. He said, you don't use your money. You use other people's money to get these deals. And started teaching me the game of how to do it without using and using minimal money. And that's what I've been trying to teach people. When I first got into real estate, I called three people. I called Clue. Mm-hmm. I called Fabulous. Mm-hmm. I called Joe Button. Mm-hmm. Right? My Desert Storm family. And I said, hey, guys, I'm doing real estate. This is something that I think that, you know, you should invest a little bit of money and try it out. And that way you can do it. Joe Button told me it was a Ponzi scheme and I was going to go to jail. <laughs> Fab was like, ah, I'll call you back. And Clue was like, nah, it's not for me. But I tried to teach them how to do it because I wanted my brothers to eat. So, and I meant. Come on, son. This is why we don't have no more love making music. Because this is the shit that's being done on the radio. And to all you rappers out there, right? I know a lot of rappers right now that's paying to get on the radio. And I'm like, y'all dudes is stupid. You better off just paying me to be played on my platform. Because you niggas don't nobody listen to the radio. Newsflash, warning, warning, warning to all you up and coming rappers that's looking to be on the radio. Don't nobody listen to the radio. Everybody gets in their car and they listen to their own playlist. Nobody listens to the radio. Don't nobody want to hear those boring ass commercials. In the comment section right now, I'm asking everybody with the 77, the 3,700 people in the building. Do you listen to the radio? Yes or no? Nope. Is anybody in New York listening to Hot 97 or 105.7.1 or whatever that is? Nope. So all you dudes, all you rappers, that's half, that y- y- y'all so happy to be on the radio, ain't nobody listening to that shit. You ain't make it, nigga. Paying y'all way to be on the radio. That's why I tell dude, I don't care what y'all say about me, man. I'm the main event. Them niggas just the opening act. I refuse to have to stand next to a celebrity. I have to stand next to a rapper to be hot. Not me. Not Wanda's son. Not me. Not me. Ain't nobody listening to the radio. Now you see why. You forced to listen to the radio. And then, and then you want to see what you listening to the radio? The time Charlemagne bragged about raping a girl on the radio. The time Charlemagne bragged about raping a girl on the radio. Oh, he done had his lawyers take it all down? Charlemagne the God brags about raping a girl on the radio. Charlemagne the God brags about raping a girl on the radio. Where's that? And we're to be talking about mm-hmm. I got this girl, you know. You know. I fought, Just that sentence sounds like this. I'm not a drunk. I remember going, I, I went to the sex store, I got Spanish fly. Oh, so you raped him? Shut up. <laughs> Spanish fly. <laughs> they sell it in the sex store. I'm telling the truth. They, they sell it in the Spanish store. I had to fucking, I had to fucking spit. They sell it in the sex store, too. You can put that to a girl's throat. Yeah, that's 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 so I put the Spanish fly in the ENJ. We drinking the ENJ and shit. So in my mind, I don't know if this shit really worked, but I feel like I got horny as a motherfucker, too. So 
so, so, so she was drunk and shit, and we had sex and shit, and like a lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck out. Like, nah, she like, I can't, I'm not doing that. I ain't nothing to do with the tree. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so this so, is one on one, ain't right? Yeah. So the next are right. So the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up, and um, we talk about it. And she's like, what happened? Like, we had sex. She said, okay, well, I'm glad it was you. Then a couple days later, she's like, yo, are you sure I'm going to have sex with you? <laughs> One of my stupid ass cousins was going around saying he fucked her, which he didn't. I, can't, I know for a fact he did. I was dead old time. Yeah, yeah. He did not fuck her. Yeah. He looked at her naked, but he didn't fuck her, <laughs> right? So, 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 I'm telling her, no, me and you just had sex, nobody else did nothing. So it just was weird that she was like, oh, I'm just glad it was you. You know what I'm saying? Because in my mind, like, yeah, you could have been in a real bad situation if it was another That's fucking fucking head. Now, this was him describing what he did to this girl, Jessica Reed. That's him describing what he did to her on the radio. And then listen to what he's sitting up there saying with his lies. He gave her something to knock her out. He admitted to that. I just heard the audio. Did y'all hear the audio or should I play it again? Did y'all hear it or should I play? Oh, y'all couldn't hear it? Should I play it again? Did y'all hear it? All right. Let me play it again. And I need for y'all to hit that like button, man. Y'all know they playing with the algorithm. When certain words come in, they start pulling people out. And we're going to be talking mm -hmm. I got this girl real drunk. You know. You know. I fought, we Just fought. that sentence sounds a little bit. I, I, I like, got a drunk. I, 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 I didn't just do it. Like, I remember going, I, I went to the sex store and got Spanish fly. Oh, so you ready for Shut up. <laughs> Spanish fly. They spell it in Spanish, though. I'm telling the truth. They, they spell it in Spanish, though. I had the fucking... I had the fucking... There's some guys in the store, too. You can put that to a girl's throat. That's sex with her. That's what it's illegal. So I put the Spanish fly in the E&J. We drinking the E&J and shit. So in my mind, all of this shit really worked. But I feel like I got horny as a motherfucker, too. So she was drunk and shit. And we had sex and shit. And, like... A lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck out. Like, nah, she's like, I can't, I'm not doing that. I ain't not going to do the treatment. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so, this so, is one on one. It ain't right. Yeah. So, the next morning, right. so the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up. And um, we talk about it. And she's like, what happened? Like, we had sex. She said, okay, well, I'm glad it was you. Then a couple days later, She's like, yo, are you sure only had sex with you? <laughs> One of my stupid ass cousins was going around saying he fucked her, which he didn't. I, okay. I know for a fact he did. Okay. I was dead old time. Yeah, yeah. He did not fuck her. Yeah. He looked at her naked, but he didn't fuck her, right? <laughs> so, 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 I'm telling her. So that's funny? And he thinks it's funny that he convinces a girl to come spend time with him. And somewhere in this story, he leaves out that he got a house full of people. Somewhere in this story, he leaves out that he has a house full of people. But somewhere in this story, he tells you about how he gave a Spanish fly. You don't need to give a, a female Spanish fly when you can give her some douce. You don't need to give a female some Spanish fly when you can give her some honey. So now he's telling you he put something in her drink to knock her out. She woke up discombobulated. Now he's sitting up there laughing, talking about, oh, nah, I ain't letting my cousin smash you. I just pulled the covers off of your naked body because I knocked you out, put you to sleep, knocked you out, violated your body, opened up the door for everybody to see that was in there and let them get a taste of your naked body. And later on that night, this, this, is, this ended up being a real life story of Jack, Jessica Reed. And this is the niggas that y'all got on a radio station. Turn the radio off. This is who y'all got at the radio stations.
and let me say this. Let me say this because I, I don't have a, a vendetta against Charlemagne. We've never done business. He's never been uh, disrespectful or anything towards me. He's he's always provided a very neutral uh, perspective to the things that have always been going on with me or stories that he's reported. So I don't, me personally, I don't know him. However, you're not lying about this. Ariel Murder Beach, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I got this girl real drunk. And, um, I fought, we Just fought. that sentence sounds a little bit. I, I, I got her drunk. I, know, oh, yeah, I, 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 it's better now, huh? I remember going. I, I went to the sex store and got Spanish fly. Oh, so you raped her? Shut up. <laughs> Spanish fly. <laughs> they sell it in the sex store. You, I, I'm telling the truth. They, they spell it in Spanish store. I had to fucking. I had to fucking. There's some knives in the sex store too. You could put that to a girl's throat yeah, and have sex with her. Doesn't mean it's illegal. So I put the Spanish fly in the E and J. We drinking the E and J and shit. So in my mind, I don't know if this shit really worked, but I felt like I got horny as a motherfucker too. So she was drunk and shit, and we had sex and shit, and like. A lot of my boys was trying to come in the room and fuck her. I'm like, nah, she's like, I can't, you're not doing that. And I'm like, what, you're in the train room. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, right. So, it's so, just one on one, it ain't right. Yeah. So, the next trains are right. So, the next morning she wakes up. The next morning she wakes up and um, we talk about it. And she's like, what happened? I'm like, we had sex. She said, okay, well, I'm glad it was you. Then a couple days later, She's like, yo, are you sure I only had sex with you? <laughs> and one of my stupid ass cousins was going around saying he fucked her, which he didn't. I, okay. I know for a fact he didn't. Okay. I was dead the whole time. Yeah, yeah. He did not fuck her. Yeah. He looked at her naked, but he didn't fuck her, <laughs> right? So, so, so I'm telling her, no, me and you just had sex. Nobody else did nothing. So it just was weird that she was like, well, I'm just glad it was you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. in my mind, I'm like, yeah, you could have been in a real bad situation if it was another That's a motherfucker. Huge compliment, man. A girl just said, yo. At least you raped me. I didn't rape her. <laughs> I did not rape her. I did not rape her. Hey, if it was any of your cousins or friends, it would have been raped. I didn't rape her because me and her had every intention of having sex with each other. So then why would you put the Spanish fly? I was a freaky I'm still a freaky motherfucker, but I was really, I was, I, listen, my Wait, whole- Wait, she passed out while you fucked her? Me and Malika were alone for a while until the EMS got there. Like, we were by ourselves. It was just dark. And then I just remember sitting on the curb, just crying. <laughs> to Malika and I said Malika I love you and she said I love you too and um That shit, it hit different when you get to see that young girl telling her story or the older version of her now and you she telling her story and the only reason why Mr. Lesser Charge didn't get convicted because the mother didn't want to push the court case and put her child through the scrutiny of being violated by the district attorney, of not the district attorney, his lawyers back then so he copped out to a lesser charge that man went to that woman's house and i want y'all to know right what some of y'all don't know is is that charlemagne the god almost took my youtube channel the nigga hit me with three strikes back to back i had to appeal him he had his lawyers come at me because i was the first one to deal with him and with this case and what he did funk master flex was right he let the lawyers go and I almost lost my page. That's why I fell back. And I kind of got upset 
with Jessica Reed because I wasn't getting the support from her the way I was supporting her. I almost lost my platform. And I wasn't really getting that support from her the way I needed her to support me the way I was supporting her. But it wasn't happening. But at the same time, I still stand by her fight. Turn the radio off, man. Half these people that y'all worship, the people that these people put in position, you think they put these people in position without compromising their soul? Sodium Podcast, new interview from STI, Rob Rizza, youngest brother for his chain. So you proud of that? That's the highlight of your life? And then you're going to use my, 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 my super chat to highlight that you robbed somebody for their chain? So that was the best moment how Nicki Minaj said, if I could have this moment for life. That was your moment for life? Fucking bum. Ray, your highs, I've been trying to log into your live. It was telling me that your live was private. What the? Yeah, because they dirty. The game is rigged. I guarantee you right now we got at least 20,000 people watching this live. I know that. As a matter of fact, the crazy, I want everybody that's watching, hit the like button so we can see how many people really watching. And keep hitting it because they're not going to let the like go out. The like button go through. I know I'm being sabotaged. They're trying to water my, pro my platform down because I bring this real shit. And I'm sick and tired of niggas running around still in my style. Now, let me play something for y'all real quick, right? Because y'all got a habit of sending me stuff. Y'all got a habit of sending me stuff. And y'all starting to see. Listen to this. Let me see this real quick. Thank you, you sure on your stuff. Hold up. Let me rewind a little bit back. somebody to weigh the cost and the benefits to say, okay, well, maybe they don't have that ability, homie. So until they brain develop, this group of, of gangsters or this group of gangbangers, uh, they the planet of the apes when the apes got the guns. They the monkeys with the guns. They the monkeys with the guns and a lot of people go die. Lack of education, homie, is what's different now. We had some sort of education. That's why when the niggas come back from prison, they can speak Arabic. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. They can speak Hebrew language. Uh, they can go down there and read about black people was the real Jews 50,000 years ago. This group, bro, you got to tell them about that. They ain't going to be able to read it. The Book of Eli. Go back and watch the movie, The Book of Eli. This, that group. Sitting on side the road behind a car, broke down car, ready to jump out and attack. Hmm. This, that group. Y'all gonna tell me that I don't use that reference and I haven't been using that reference for seven years on YouTube? Come on, man. This nigga don't even have an identity. All he do and study her song Campbell, the best of her song Campbell, and then go on St. Cheese platform and other big platforms and regurgitate everything that I say. Y'all thought I was bugging, but now everybody's sending it. I don't watch this nigga. But clearly, everything that I say that come out of my mouth, he's spitting out of his mouth. Come on, man. Like, it's like I can't even have my own identity. A nigga sit up there and watch me go on a bigger platform where he know more people is going to get the notifications then spit and regurgitate everything that I say out of my mouth. The Book of Eli is one of my favorite movies. And I always use that movie in reference to the days and times that we are in right now. The movie with Rowdy Rowdy Piper, they live. I always use that. It's mad movies that I use. 
Niggas be like, oh, he watched too much TV. No, they want you to feel like you watch too much TV. That's why they put it in the TV. So you can't believe it. And then 30 years over after watching Demolition Man, everything that they showed you in that goddamn movie is being predicted and shown in front of you right now. You see in that technology right now. Every bit of it. Like, come on, man. How many of my lyrics is going to come out of your fat mouth, Charleston White? How many? It's like, damn. I need all of y'all to hit that like button because the same way we just went up to 5,600, they pull us all the way back down to 4,700. Hit that like button. Play with this algorithm back, man. Play with the algorithm back. I'm going to play it for you again. Like, yo, when I heard this, I'm like, yo, it's like stealing. It's like you don't win. And you don't set like, because it's like, I want the knowledge to be spread. But not from a nigga that I helped to get as big as he got. Oh, y'all forgot that too. When you put dudes up under my belt that I helped grow on YouTube, Charleston White was big on Facebook. I promoted the nigga on YouTube. Me and InfoMods, Timbo. Like, stop, man. I give y'all classic lives, night after night after night, and niggas sit up there and watch and study and watch and study. What's different now? We had some sort of education. That's why when them niggas come back from prison, they can speak Arabic. Assalamu alaikum, my brother. They can speak Hebrew language. Uh, they can go down there and read about black people was the real Jews 50,000 years ago. This group, pro, you got to tell them about that. They ain't going to be able to read it. The Book of Eli. Go back and watch the movie, The Book of Eli. This, that group, sitting on side the road behind a car, broke down car, ready to jump out and attack. Hmm. This, that group. And hey, they bro. don't know nothing about picking up a book. But before we move on, I want to go back to Fort Worth for a minute. You, you. What we call that? Breaking the entry? Nigga that stole out my car, nigga, you done broken in my house, nigga. That's breaking the entry. That's robbery, man. That's highway robbery right there. Why Seagull's name is in my thumbnail? I'm glad, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you want to know why. Let's get to him right now, just because you asked. Seagull, my thoughts today was very uplifting, very uplifting. This is actually the first time that me following a presidential campaign that I believe that the person that was running was honest. I'm supporting Kennedy for this upcoming campaign. I had a chance to read over a lot of his policies and the things that he wants to uh, bring forth and this is the first time I believe that a, a, a person that is trying to empower the people, especially my people, you know, and I believe he's honest. I believe he's honest because you don't have policies that's just over here, over there, over there, and over there. Everything seems to work together in this and, and I really believe in it and I'm supporting this campaign and I suggest that you support this campaign, especially the tri-state and surrounding areas. You're hearing it from me, Beanie Seagull, and I'm supporting Kennedy. I'm going to try my best not to say what I want to say the wrong way because I know the algorithm is watching me, but... I hope they turn your TV off in your sleep. I hope they cut your cable off, Beanie Seagull. I pray for the day that they rock your snot box, my nigga. It's like night night, nigga. I cannot stand you rappers. 
Now y'all want to turn politician. Everything that go wrong in the streets, everything that's been going wrong in the black community, these niggas don't say nothing about it. But every time it's election season, you see some funny looking nigga like him. Looking like, yo. Know, let me be careful because y'all already know they watching the mass flag. They playing with the channel. They looking for me to say, yo, like, why don't you take your Whoopi Goldberg looking ass back to Philly and don't get back on the internet no more. Beanie Seeker will tag him and tell him, why don't you take your Whoopi Goldberg looking ass. Back to where you come from. Go back to go get your diabetes. Go get your diabetic me medicine, my nigga. You looking sick. You looking bad out here on these YouTube streets. Please stay out of our business. You've never used your voice to do anything but pollute the black community with those stink ass raps. Even though I love Beanie as a rapper. Don't give me the lie. One of my favorite songs. I feel it in the air. But nigga, we don't need you. Like, we really, really, really don't need you promoting another colonizer on these platforms. If you don't, here's the rules, Beanie, Seagull, with your Whoopi Goldberg-looking ass. Silly? Hoppo gonna kill you dead. If you ain't gonna use your voice every day with all the shit that's going on with black people that's bad, with all these drill rappers that was drilling each other, running to the studio, rapping, bragging about how they done ran up and in a nigga out, going to the studio, and then when they get home watching the news, watching the ambulance pick up the person they left, they go into the studio and brag about it. We watched black people become the pandemic within the pandemic, and that was all drill rap. And now you want to bring your fraggle, fraggle rock, your fraggle rock looking ass to the internet to use your rap power, your industry power to sway the people to go vote for another colonizer? Dogs. So I realized in this life that some people is just taking up space on this earth. And this world is a better place without some of you. The grave is waiting. You should go. Like, really, Beanie, the grave is waiting. You should go. Using these platforms to do the devil. Like, damn, y'all don't think Papoose did enough? Papoose, Papoose. Remember that beautiful poem that he had for Kamala Harris? Now we sitting up here on the break of World War III waiting for them to send out draft letters because we already know in order to bring in a new world order, they have to cause destruction. Out of chaos comes order. That's what it means in a new world order. Out of chaos come order. So they're going to turn the world upside down. Then they're going to come with one world government, one world leader to solve the problem that they caused. So that they can put the noose around your neck that you will never, ever, ever get out of digital slavery. They own the air, they own the water, they own the radio, they own the space stations, they own the internet, they own your birth certificate, they own your social security card, and they own all these stink ass rappers y'all keep looking up to. Before you can free your Palestine, you better free your mind. I done had people sit up there tell me, I don't really watch you like that, but they watch Blueface and goddamn and Chris, Chris Sean. Like, what? What an insult. You don't watch me like that, but you watch Blueface with her missing tooth ass, a, 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 a Chris Sean and Blueface? Really? I'd rather watch Kelly Bundy. Love in marriage, love in marriage. I'd rather watch Kelly Bundy. And Al. I'm sick and tired of these people using 
these celebrities to further their agenda, to push us in a way, in a direction where they want our brains at. That's why I said the world don't need another rapper. And no, Charleston White wasn't the first to say it. I said it. The song is very disrespectful when you got people sitting up there trying to do the devil's dirty work. There was a time when rappers was public enemy number one. Now they hanging out with the mayor. There was a time when rappers was public enemy number one. Now they hanging out with the president. Why you people ain't ask yourself a question? What the hell made presidents? The mayor was the, the, was the top cop. Now he's hanging out with drug dealers. Fat Joe is a drug dealer. You got the mayor hanging out with the drug dealer. You got the vice president hanging out with drug dealers. Y'all don't realize the time that we are living in? Wow. That's because every hero that you had, they turned into a sandwich. Every hero that you had, they turned into a sandwich. Literally. I don't think y'all realize shit's starting to come out now. I mean, Martin Luther King got to the hospital. They rocked his snot box. Then they probably sent his meat over to motherfucking McDonald's for you to eat. <laughs> and y'all think I'm laughing. Like I'm really... And wonder why you so sick. Every time you put a happy meal inside your mouth, you eating somebody's dead flush. And wonder why you don't feel good every day, all day. Every time you go into certain Chinese restaurants and you eating that beef lo mein, that, that ain't beef. You ever seen beef that look like that? When you eating chicken, you, you eating the chicken, the chicken lo mein. Chicken and broccoli with garlic sauce. Do that look? Have you ever seen chicken meat look like that? Have you ever seen that texture of chicken meat? What are you eating? What are you eating? James Worth, to keep doing your thing, Haas. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. And yes, man, start talking to me in this super chat because y'all know YouTube is not monetizing this video. Y'all know they're not going to monetize me. Y'all ask me why, but why I be so mad? Why you always shout clout chasing? Because I see what y'all don't see when it comes to this industry. This Jewish person on earth, essentially, right? Who mm -hmm. else could, could do a tour and fill out coliseums worldwide who's Jewish besides Drake, right? Khaled is the most famous Palestinian in the world, but neither one of them has said anything about this at all. Mm -hmm. And people are saying, well, well, they're not politicians, whatever. They influence hundreds of millions of people, which ultimately has an influence on the world. And you're not choosing to, to, like, to say anything. And Drake, who has a Jewish mother, you know, which by Jewish law makes him Jewish, but not only that, his parents got divorced when he was five years old and he grew up with his Jewish mother and her Jewish relatives in Forest Hills, which is a Jewish community in Toronto. He had a bar mitzvah. And then when this happens, he doesn't say anything because I think that he doesn't want to potentially affect his record sales. But why does he have to say anything? Him or, like, why, why, does, why does him or Khaled have to say anything publicly? They don't, Drake. Vlad, why are you not saying something? Why are you worried about what Khaled is doing? Vlad, you got over a million subscribers on your YouTube page, and instead of asking questions about the powers to be on why they keep sitting up there attacking innocent people, why you not doing that, Vlad? Why you want DJ Khaled to sit up there and use his, first of all, DJ Khaled is Muslim. And him being in the music industry is already a violation of Islam. So why would he want to open up his mouth when he already know that he's in trouble with a loss upon him with the Isla for even being in the music industry. He already know, DJ Khaled already knows that he's in trouble with a loss upon him with the Isla with almighty God. Because the music industry is Satan's house. 
And it's Satan's door. And when you knock on Satan's door, you can't come back into paradise. You can't serve two masters. So DJ Khaled, he might be sitting up there saying, you know what? Let me move in silence. The whole internet don't need to know that I'm supporting my people or family back in, 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 in whatever, in Palestine or Israel. That's really some hateful ass shit. And then all of these black people that's sitting up there like, yo, are you kidding me? It's just that when you see through people, you see through them. Like what? Another. They done revoked DJ Khaled Iron Card over there in the goddamn Palestine. They done told him he can't work at the gas station. He can't work at the conveyance store. He can't play the lottery no more. He can't do nothing. Ain't no fool step for that over there in goddamn Palestine. They ain't playing with it. Check this shit out. Why'd you make this sign? This man is a bitch. His name is DJ Khaled, he's Palestinian, and he could be the biggest voice for Palestine if he used this platform, but he stays silent. Why? Because he want that money, bro! He want that money, he sold his soul. What do you want to tell DJ Khaled? Turn to your damn people, speak out for your own people, man. But if you don't, you're a bitch, bro. DJ Khaled is the biggest Palestinian our goddamn to ever come up out their country. People are furious with DJ Khaled right now, because people want to know, oh, you just left us to work at the gas station, now you think you better know? Station no more. Oh, cause we ain't got to work at the corner store no more. Hurry up and buy. Hurry up and buy. You ain't now you think you better enough, huh? Yeah, they furious with DJ Khaled for not standing with his country right now in the time of war. He ain't released no statements. He ain't released no posts. He ain't made no post war people. They extremely mad at DJ Khaled and they banning him from the country and dismembering his affiliation as an Arab. DJ Khaled back in the early 2000s was known as the Arab Attack, a slogan that he adopted for being a great Palestinian DJ. Well, now the people are in need of support and they blaming DJ Khaled, another one, for goddamn not using his platform to promote peace in a time of war. They burning up all his shoes. Y'all heard enough of that. I ain't got to play no more of that garbage. You know what's sad? Matter of fact, let me read this slick comment real quick. Hassan Thai Grease. You stole from, from Doggy, Sanetta, Charleston, Zip, and a host of others when the last time you read a book, all you do is re regurgitate other people. I'm glad you said that. Now, here it is, you, with your low, with, 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 with low self-esteem ass. I stole from Doggy. Now, let me break this down. I'm glad you said that because you just giving me more content. First and foremost, Doggy Diamonds used to do lives, right? Doggy Diamonds used to do lives, or rather, Doggy Diamonds used to do interviews. Then when he would go live, when nobody wanted to go on his platform no more, for those interviews, he used to sit up there and talk shit. I don't talk about people, which meant he never did celebrity gossip. So then years after him watching Hassan do celebrity gossip and realized that I went from 100,000 all the way almost to 500,000 talking about these sucker ass celebrities. He adapted my style, my conversation. He was doing interviews his whole life until shit went down. Then he switched his style up to the shit that I'm doing. Cut it out. Now you said Sarnetta. Sarnetta does debates about religion. I barely even talk about religion. He tries to debate, and de I mean debunk religion. So now that's too, I, mean, I just made you look stupid. Sanetta doesn't talk about none of the topics that I talk about. So you sound stupid. Now on, the, on to the third one. Zip with the drip. I don't sit on my platform and cough and smoke weed. And cough and smoke weed. And cough and smoke weed. I would never spend seven days in a row talking about scheme team. Stole from who? Niggas that I put on? Fuck is you talking about? And I don't need to read a book. I don't never need to read a book because with me stuttering, st st stuttering Stanley, st 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 stuttering Stanley, I'm doing way better than you and your whole fucking family. Now, that was the best $5 you ever spent in your life. See, that's the crazy part about it is anybody that's watching me that can't read, 
Don't never let that make you feel some type of way. Because the, the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, could not read. But he got over a billion Muslim running around this world. The prophet Muhammad could not read. But he got billions of people getting on their knees praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not being able to read don't mean shit. Because most of the people that can read and went to college, they ain't even making more than thirty dollars or $40,000 a year. When you got niggas that stuttering on the internet making that in one month. Huh? What? Take the what? What good is it being able to read and you still live in the projects? What good is it to being able to read and you still live in tenement buildings? What good is it to be able to read and you still think you are African-American? All your sons want to be gangster rappers. All your daughters want to be strippers. The good woman that preserved they, they punani all of these years is now sitting up there giving they shit up. Playing that song, I should have cheated. And they going out there now, they being slutted out. And when they go to sleep at nighttime, they can't even sleep good at nighttime no more because now they done passed the punani around to a bunch of different niggas and they done violated their goddamn chastity. They done threw their integrity out following the horse. Most of you dudes sitting up there watching don't even realize that your wife is somebody else's side chick. Society to is today because of these black celebrities. Y'all used to blame it on the pastors. Y'all don't blame it on the pastors no more because the pastors ain't nowhere to be found. The pastors mind in their business. The church is mind in their business. The church and the pastors then went over to the pulpit. Now they got cash out. They don't need you. They don't even want you. They left you to deal with your own demons. Your kids is outside running around talking about they on demon time. The pastors used to come out and do the, the exorcist performance to get the demons out. Now they ain't trying to get them demons out your kids because your kid going to rock their snot box. Hit them in the head, the head shot. Ain't nobody casting the demons out of your kids. You know what's casting the demon out of your kids? When that judge sit in that courtroom and say, life. He grabs that hammer and say, hakata. Order in the court, order in the court. I hereby today sentence you <laughs> to 400 months in the penitentiary. Hard blood, sweat, and tears. You're going to make license plate soap. Uh, license plates, you're going to make that cold craft soap? Yeah. Stay up, Haas. One love, soldier. Thank you, Quote 7. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war, family. Too many... New job, Haas. About to start sponsoring this war. Appreciate you, family. Appreciate you. But that's why I'm telling you that's how many people we really got in the building. Hit the like button, man. Shake up this algorithm. Let these bots know that y'all rocking with me. Because if y'all not going to do that, I'm going to stop doing lives. I'm telling y'all right now. I'm not going to keep doing lives on YouTube and then they shortening my numbers. Like now, every time I go live, they giving me less and less people on my live. Like, no. We had seven. We had almost 8,000 people on a live three times back to back. Now they're like, nah, that's too much power. Let's cut this nigga numbers again. Nah, man. Did you have a full-time job? Who the f 
Who in their right mind want a job? The only person that want a job is a slave. Niggas be sitting up there. You would never, ever, ever in your life see me be happy to put in the application. Oh, I got the job. No, I'm mad. I'm happy that I got an income coming up, but I'm really mad that I got to be forced to work for a billionaire until I die. I'm never going to be ha happy about that. I'm not the nigga. I got good credit right now. I'm never going to be the happy, the, the happy dude happy. I'm never going to be happy because I got good credit. If I could get away with not paying my taxes, if I could get away with not paying my debt, I'd never pay you motherfuckers enough. For what? Did you give me back my 400 years of blood, sweat, and tears? Did y'all give me my 40 acres in the, in the mule? No. Right in front of your face every single day, you watching these politicians give everybody else, they taking care of their friends and their enemies, both sides, but refuse to give the American slave Reparations for everything they did to us. I would never be happy to work for a corporation. And every time they play with my numbers on this shit, I go out kicking and screaming. Chastity, just showing support. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Rashida Terry, appreciate you, family. Now, my question to y'all is, right? If DJ Khaled saw how Kanye took a stand after they took his white wife, you know, because he had an arranged marriage, that was part of his oath, the door, when he went through the door. They took his white wife because he broke the oath. So now they let her be free from the contract that they had. So she could go play with another nigga. When, when Kanye sat up there and started speaking on behalf of black people, and he told you who was your enemy, and they took him from being a billionaire and reduced him to shit and took his companies, right? What did the black people do? To put him back in the position. Y'all laughed at him and y'all clowned at him. So now you got Nino Brown. That's what be killing me about niggas, man. You got Nino Brown, a nigga that used to be on the internet, prostituting out black women while his fat ass sat in a robe and them standing over him screaming, Grapes! What happened to the strippers feeding you grapes? Oh, I know what happened. Hassan Campbell started making videos about the nigga violating and black women like that. Then he started realizing that niggas like Polite and all the rest of these poverty pimps, they use their black voices for black people and talking about celebrity gossip. It came with a check. So then he went from prostituting black women while they fed him grapes on the internet so now he acting like he using his voice dissing the rappers because that rap game won't let that fat nigga in. Now, see, my whole thing is I don't mind people changing in life, but I don't like poverty pimps. That nigga don't give a goddamn about his people. So he wants DJ Khaled to sit up there. DJ Khaled. He wants DJ Khaled to sit up there and stop his income from coming in. The last thing in the world that I want and I don't mean no harm to anybody that's still in the projects, still in the tenement buildings, still in the hood. And I'm mainly talking about New York City. I bust my ass to get out of that shit. My wife bust her ass to get out of that shit. Because I consciously know the way y'all living there is made for pigs. That's why your children act like pigs. I refuse. What me seeing and y'all watching, how these bots and YouTube is playing with my numbers, how y'all sat up there and watched a uh, 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 crater face, whack 100, 
actually tell y'all that he got technicians putting bots on my channel to destroy my channel. The nigga told y'all that. Y'all watched them niggas try to sabotage me after I came off that interview with Takashi 6 9 Are oh, y'all sitting up there sponsoring this war to make sure that I could keep my kids out of the hood? Nope. You know how much it costs? To maintain it, like you got to keep in mind, Jim Jones, and, I, and I, 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 I put this video up earlier, but I didn't release it yet, addressing Jim Jones. Jim Jones makes me sick to my stomach every time I see him promoting the hood. Every time I see him throw money on strippers. Every time I see you throw money on strippers, I'm asking, why would you do that? When you went bankrupt, the nigga couldn't even pay a $4,600 mortgage. This is Jim Jones. The nigga that's running around with a million dollars worth of jewelry on his body every time y'all see him. He couldn't pay a $4,600 mortgage, but he keep trying to entrap y'all and push y'all down the same path that he's going. He's selling y'all doom and gloom. AKA the nightlife. The fastest way to go broke. The fastest way to go up into bankruptcy. The fastest way to go into debt. I'm not buying what these niggas selling. But you clearly is. And I'll be damned if I'm going to sit up there and keep on using my voice to wake up a people. That's like we got 4,600 people in the building. If everybody that was watching said, okay, let's hit this nigga cash app up and put a dollar in Hassan Campbell's cash app, oh, y'all would keep me afloat. Nigga, that's four quarters. But y'all not doing that. But I could sit up there and watch rich people because I watch the rich. Corey Homecombs. Every time he do a live, this nigga's rich. He's leaving his live with five and $10,000 easy in Super Chat. Watching Andrew Tate. So the people that, that niggas like me, y'all don't want to see me stay afloat. Y'all watch my platform to see if it's still going down or if it's going up to see if I'm maintaining and get the truth at time. But we already know anybody that's on these platforms that tell the truth, they get the shitty end of the stick. Scam bag shout out from Jersey. Salute, Haas. Thank you, family, for sponsoring this war. Jamie, what up? Yo, from Lawrence. Salute, support. At least, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Manolo live and direct. The game is rigged. Corporations in the matrix are meeting the agenda. Agents, facts. Get out of them, highs. Jameer, thank you, family. Appreciate you. The lies are always shown and the truth is hidden. Now, nowadays the truth is out there. It's just what you're looking for. A lot of people don't want the truth because if you look at the truth, it's going to wake you up. Then when you're facing the truth and you're forced to be facing the truth, it makes you have to step up and say, okay, well, what am I going to do now? Something has to be done. You can't just acknowledge that there's truth out there and then don't do something about the falsehood, the falsehoods and the lives and the lifestyles that you're living. And me sitting up here being live with 4,700 people in the building, this should be 4,700 4, likes. But I'm not going to get mad. It is what it is. In a minute, you're not going to find me on YouTube like that. And if you do, you're going to find a pre-recorded video. You're going to have to go over to Rumble or you have to watch these whack-ass niggas y'all been watching in the dirty section. That's what y'all going to be stuck with. Or you can keep on going over there to say cheese and watch Charleston White regurgitate me out of his fat mouth. My cash app is dollar sign Hassan Campbell. I'm laughing my ass off. I meant to upload that video so y'all can see it with Nicki Minaj. That young boy that went downtown that got that caused that riot. He was doing a live with Nicki Minaj and he called her auntie and she spazzed on him. Like what you expect. She got mad because he called her auntie. You in your 40s, Nicki. What you expect? You're not the same age as that young boy. 30 is not the, the, the brand new 20. Like Jay-Z said 20 years ago. 
If 40 is not the new 30, nigga, you're old. Jerron Jackson, love you, bro. Keep going. Birmingham, Alabama, rocking with you. Appreciate you, fam. Devon Shabazz, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Hots keep spreading the wisdom and less bickering amongst brothers. Ain't really no bickering going on. The truth is just going to be sure we're not brothers. That's what the, that's what the fuck y'all got to understand. I'm going to make clear to y'all. We are not brothers. There's a line in the village where it's going to be either you're going to be up here to uplift the village or you're going to be a 50-year-old rapper still bragging about selling drugs in the village. When your children... Keep turning on the TV and they see all the 20 year olds getting in Lear jets and got millions of dollars in their video. Then they see the 50 and 40 year olds that's still in the hood, still rapping. Then they look at the broke ass janitor. They look at the, the broke ass basketball coach in their school. They look at the broke ass because those are the good people that's making a good, honest living being poor. They don't want to be that. They want to be the real nigga and the bad bitch. That's what they want to be. This system was smart with what they did. They took the most foulest creature out of the hood and made it rich. Now you got to ask yourself a question. Who the fuck want to be poor? All the females is talking about they ain't dealing with no broke ass nigga. Most of the females... This system then gave them welfare section eight, so they violating the man and putting them on child support. Some of these dudes hate their kids, and I can't even blame them. Cause mama never taught us. They be nights like this, nights like this, when your baby mother is sitting up there in the courtroom, talking about give me more, while her new boyfriend sitting in the living room playing PlayStation. In Xbox, she giving him plates of food. Off of the food that you donating to your kids, off of that goddamn, that, that child support. But she don't require him to do nothing but give her hard dick and bubble gum when she go to bed at night time. Niggas' kids that turned into a weapon against them. And then these same bitches running around talking about they don't need no man. They raising these militant little fucking monsters that's killers at the age of 12 years old. And if you one of those niggas that's watching me that brag about how, yeah, you was getting busy at 12 years old, that's because your mother wasn't shit. She the bitch I'm talking about right now. If you was busting your gun at 12 years old and 13 years old, nigga, your mother wasn't shit. Let me be the first to tell you. GGG, be careful using Allah's name with alcohol breath. Allah white ball. Have the tea. Appreciate you, family. Thank you. Life, W Cam. We love you, Haas. Thank you. Big Meek. We've had many examples from foreigners coming here showing how we can, should, and need to come together. And the majority of us still don't get it. Nope, they don't. Your voice is, is saved a lot of people. So if we got to settle for pre-recording, so, so be it. You done your part. More salute. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Pot view. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Yvette, keep spreading the truth, Haas. I sure enough will, family. I ain't come here to play no games, man. Not at all. And it's like you know what I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry but sometimes I want I want to be foul. Sometimes I don't want to be the good dude. Sometimes I want to be foul. Sometimes I want to be the narcissist. Sometimes I want to be shysty. Good people sometimes finish last. Sometimes I want to be egotistical. That's why I put up that post on Instagram talking about I'm the main event. Rob Negus. I'm the main event. You niggas is opening acts. I was being sarcastic. 
Because the way people talk about me behind my back, you bum ass niggas. The way niggas behind my back, you bum ass niggas. You can't help everybody because some of these niggas is bum ass niggas with bum ass man, bum mentalities. And let me tell you something right now, right? Because there's a lot of good people out there. Be careful who you help. Because sometimes you can help a person and you thinking it's putting a smile on their face, but they hate the fact that the help is coming from you and it causes envy. Especially if you helping niggas that used to have one up, they used to be above you considering when it, when, when it was getting money in the streets. And now them niggas is nights like this. I wish that rain drops would fall. Nights like this. Washed up. They washed. Running around trying to be next to rappers. Niggas is 50 years old in the studio trying to rap. Niggas are senior citizens. Like, are you kidding me? Waiting for them to open up the door for your old ratchet ass. Some of you old rappers is worse than ratchet women. Listen to these niggas. Listen to them. Hoping that they play you on the radio. Don't nobody listen to the radio. And if they did play y'all. Oh, yo, some of y'all dudes that's rapping. Y'all music sound like. Y'all sound like the hip. The hop. The hippy, 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 the hip hop. But don't, don't stop. But don't, like get out of here with that shit. Ew. Don't nobody want to listen to that. If they did play you on the radio. And I just so happen to be. Beat, running down I-95 on the highway, and I'm, I'm on the highway to the danger zone. Then that song goes off. I can feel it in the air, right? Play beanie, I can feel it in the air. And next thing you know, your song come on. You know you, the one that's looking at the camera right now that's tight, your song comes on. And that shit, <laughs> and don't let me have a girl sitting in the car next to me, right? Then she be like, yo, Haas, what the fuck is that? <laughs> That's your music. Nobody wants to hear it. Like, really, though, nobody wants to hear it. And don't nobody care about all you dudes or how you got busy. Yeah, I was getting busy. You had to block, 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 block. The block is over. The internet is the new block. This is why I'm hot. I'm hot because you ain't. You ain't. Cause remember that whack-ass song, too? <laughs> And Mims made that song because he was mocking the South. I'm hot because you ain't. You ain't because you hot. This is why. This is why. This is why. I'm I'm hot. I'm the shit. Because the truth of the matter is, let me say this shit again. Niggas don't have to tell me that I'm not street. I don't want to be street no more. I hate them. I hate the streets. I seen what they did to Young Dolph. I hate the streets. I seen what the streets did to Tupac. Same with the industry did the Tupac, and there was no retaliation. Now I see all the niggas that claim to be real niggas in the industry sitting up there with the nigga that rock Tupac, sitting up there with the nigga that rock big, and y'all praising the streets. I sit back and I laugh like, like man, listen, when I go outside, I go outside by myself. Whatever happens, happens. Whatever happens, happens. And don't tell me, oh, we hate when you talk about how you get busy. Why? I get death threats every day. I just be trying to give you the warning. Before you make me go to jail, for 25, 30 years out of my life, I want you to understand that you're going to be on the bad end of the stick when you run down on me. What you going to do when, Hawk, when you run down on me, it's going to get bad. On top of the fact that I try to keep angels camped around me for you demons. I ain't never seen a demon defeat an angel. Not me. That demon shit don't work for warriors. We class swords in the arena. Are you not entertained? If this is not why you're here, I will turn in a Spartacus on your ass before I let one of you bum ass niggas do anything to me. And let me say this too, man. On some real shit. I don't know what you heard about them, but when I was in jail, I ain't never had a nigga come to my cell and put a knife on my cell. And tell me to lock out and we didn't get busy. Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, when I had beef in jail, niggas jumped me. When I was in jail, and this is not even a shot, this is not even a shot at Zip. 
But it just says what it is. I ain't, I ain't never had a nigga just smack me in jail and we didn't get it on. All these niggas that you praising and see a, another thing. See, some of you dudes, right? When I was in jail, when I was on Rikers Island, just to set the record straight in 94, 1994, 95, 96, 97, all them years I was on Rikers Island, right? That was when the Latin Kings was running shit and the Yetas was running shit. And you had to get busy when you was blood. And I've never went in a jail, went in a house, and they asked me if I was blood, and I said no. And I was repping one of the worst sets at that time, GKB. I've never went in any jail, and a nigga asked me, you blood? Soon as you asked me the question, it was on right then and there. But you dudes that be talking shit about me, half you niggas is crips. When you was in jail... How you get through your bed being crip and you ain't cut nobody? When all the bloods was looking to tear up the crips. Inquiring minds just want to know. See, I wasn't the nigga that went to jail getting busy. Then when I got in jail, I didn't get busy no more. A lot of y'all dudes don't like me and y'all slander my name and y'all throw mud at me. But the reality of it is, like it or not, I'm the shit. And I'm sorry if I'm sorry. I done got shit on. Spit on, disrespected, he thought me, he thought me, violated, marked behind my back. And then seen mad niggas just stand around and, and, and just quote unquote real niggas. Not even stand by me and say, yo, we got this nigga back. Niggas are smiling in your face and please, I don't care who you are. When you see me in the street, don't come give me dap in a pound and smile with me if you know you don't like me. Show me that it's real. Be real. How that song go? Just be a man about it and about it. Don't lie. You don't like me, don't pretend to. Cash app, so happy, Ken. Keep, keep it 100. Andre Barnes, salute, Haas. Let's take a shot of the devil's piss. Peace and blessings. Andre Barnes, the crazy part about it is Andre Barnes is B.O.'s real name. My brother, may he rest in peace. We outside, Casanova lingo. Allah's watching. Yes, Allah definitely is watching. Daughter of the Most High, appreciate you, family. Allah's most definitely watching. And you know what Allah's watching? He's watching 5,700 people actually watch right now because it's 57. Let me screenshot that because YouTube going to try to take that number. It's 5,700 people watching me. Mention a loss upon a what the Allah and tell you that there is no God but God. Huh? And we living in the last days. We are living in the last days. Sometimes you got to seize the moment. Huh? Nobody wants to believe in God, but you could clearly see that the devil exists. And just like that, they took us from 57 to 51, but it's all good, though. It's their platform. I guess when I sit up there and I stop trying to wake up to the fact that tomorrow's not promised, when I when I stop sitting up there trying to wake you up to the fact that, you know, everything is about energy. Everything is about your soul. The only thing that you take into the grave with you is the good and the bad that you do on this earth. The only thing that you take into the grave with you is your book of deeds. And it's just funny how the devil, the shaitan, he created a book too. God has a book. They say on the day of judgment, when you are risen up in front of God on the day of judgment, you're going to have a book of deeds. Recorded all the good things in your life that you did and all the bad things in your life that you did. And in life, you got Facebook recording all your good deeds on Facebook and all your bad deeds on Facebook. In this world, they say that Allah is the all-seeing, the all-knowing. In this world, the shaitan used the all-seeing eye, which is the camera, to watch you everywhere. You go in your bedroom, there's a TV. You go in your living room, there's a TV. In front of the buildings that you live in, there's a TV. On the subways now, there's TVs. Cameras watching you. I always feel like somebody's watching me. They won't get.
Everybody's living in their lower desires. Everybody's walking in their lower light. Everybody is dimming their light down. Nobody's being the, their righteous state, their righteous self. And then, like a thief in the night, while you party and bullshit, and you thinking that tomorrow's promised, but while you in sleep, these people thought they let off a nuclear bomb, and that nuclear bomb blows up 100 million people. Out of 100 million people, let me ask you this question. How many people are going to make it to heaven? I used to question God, but now I question the devil. I used to question God, but now I question the devil. Because he, he clearly exists. Look at the technology that we have. Every time you speak on viewers, most leave out. Of course. Every time I speak on viewers, that's what they want to do. But that's what you wanted me to read? Just sit back and analyze the world that we're living in. If there's no farms anymore, where our food is coming from? Hello, you, I, I'm, I'm, you out there, I'm talking to you. If there aren't any farms anymore, where is your food coming from? What are you eating? If all your meats is coming out of factories, either being 3D printed or out of a factory where they're sleeping and eating in, 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 in their own piss and shit, what are you eating? I just seen an article that said, you have to fact check it, that bananas are going extinct because most of the crops have a fungus. If we just sat back and watched that evil empire over there, tell the poor people over there that we're not letting you get any food, Water or power, electricity. Mentally, what are you doing behind this camera to make sure that they can't put you in a position like that where you know that you got machines in the house that's keeping your grandmother alive or your mother alive? Do you not understand that evil is ruling this world? And do you understand that everything... Since 9-11 has been a test to see what you was going to do, the George Floyd riots was a test to see what you was going to do. How you would handle this. That sickness that they unleashed on this earth and those lines they had you standing in, being placed as guinea pigs, was all tests to see what you was going to do. With marches and protests, but how so many people get down to these marches and protests about the war that's going on overseas if me and you don't know about it. How we got thousands of us on this internet, we don't know nothing about it, but they always put together a march and the same people are always at these marches and these protests. Well, where are we at? Why are we not getting the notifications? Are you going to do any collabs with other creators? I sure enough am. I don't eat food. I just live off of air, nigga. You sound crazy. So you don't eat food, but you just smoke weed? Uh, is that what you're doing? Woo, that fluoride tastes good in that water. That's sarcasm. 16 shot and dead in main shoot at large. Yeah, where is that at? 20 dead and 50 injured in Maine. Wow. I wonder who's behind that. 
Could it be all those terrorists that they got coming over the borders? Those military aged boys coming over the borders? Could it be the pissed off KKK? Inquiring minds want to know. How is people just living in darkness? World and not knowing what's to come. God is coming for his people and that do good and the ones that causes harm and hate. You reap what you sow in life. And I don't think enough people understand that too many of us have turned our back on righteousness. Too many people sit in the house talking about, I'm just going to mind my business like a coward. It sound like a coward. And I say this all the time. Everybody that says that they're going to mind their business, I call them cowards. How you minding your business when kids is being shot in the street? How you minding your business when somebody baby is getting ready to die on the street corner? But then you sit up there talking about what's going on overseas? You sound stupid. Your kids is dying every day in the street in the name of hip hop. In the name of the 50th year of hip hop. Like, stop playing. Nobody care about the kids no more. That's why the hood is over with. Investing in the future of the United States of America. Yvette Kim, thank you, family. Appreciate you. Talk about how much money they sent over for this war, fam. What about the American people? They sent reparations over for other people, but they didn't sit nothing over for, for you because you don't deserve any respect. You don't deserve reparations. You don't deserve it. You're weak. How that song go? Tell me how you going to breathe with no air. George Floyd had a knee on his neck because he let him put a knee on his neck. How you let that little ass cop Handle you like that. When it's on, it's on. You fight to the death. When it's on, it's on. I need God Almighty to tell me not to let nobody hurt me. Even if the if, yo, the Constitution tells you that you have a right to defend yourself against foreign and domestic terrorists. So when you got a KKK officer that puts on that blue uniform and comes to work and decide that he's just gonna put his knee on your neck. Until all the life squeezes out of your body. And you allow. I'm not allowed. I'm sorry. That's what be killing me. About you dudes. I'm watching the, 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 like the video with that with the black dude. Right? That got tased by the cop. I don't know what y'all be looking at. Let me see if I got this video. And I know I got to be careful if I play it. Now I don't, I don't, I don't see the video. The video of the dude that everybody was talking about. He did time in jail, and it was found that all those years he did, he was innocent. Now he on the highway, doing doing a hundred on the highway. The police pulls him over. He gets out the car. The police keep telling him to put his hands on the back of the car. He argued with the police. Do you understand who you are arguing with, with in that uniform? Do you understand that some of those people, shout out to the good police, the good white police, the good black police, wherever they at, if we can find them. Do you realize that when you are playing with the slave patrol, When they look at you, you are still three-fifths of a man. If you are not willing to go all the way out, you don't get your bitch ass out of a car and argue with the police. If he going to give you a ticket, get your ticket. If you feel like you froggish, then leap, motherfucker. Because I don't want to see no more videos people sending me to some bitch ass nigga getting aired out by the police. Because you sticking your chest out and then when they deflate your bitch ass, you ain't have no fight in you. 
Now your family sit up there singing at your funeral. He was a good man. Shut the fuck up with that bullshit. A coward, a coward dies a thousand times. A soldier only dies once. I'm sick and tired of black people playing victim. It's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. What? Take the what? And to all of all of the mods, the new mods, I'm cool with some comments coming through, but for the most part, when dudes come in the comment section and they being disrespectful, block them. I'm cool with some comments coming through, but for the most part, when dudes come up in here and they trying to switch the narrative up inside the comment section, like block them. Because it's crazy how my supporters could never get the notifications for the lives. But all these all these evil ass bots, they always find themselves to this live. What you think about the college system is bullshit. When people be sitting up there talking about I'm going to college, I'll be looking at them like they're stupid. Like for what? Go get a trade. Go get a trade. If you're not going to college to be a doctor or something that really where you really, really gonna get a job that's gonna pay you, what are you on for? Niggas be sitting up here in the comment section talking shit about me, but most of the people that that, that went to college, they're not doing better than me. My wife got a second master's and she ain't making as much money. I'm killing her. And she made way over $100,000 a year. I'm killing her. You get out of college, then you in debt. It's crazy how Gaddafi had everybody in his country going to school for free. There was nobody homeless over there in Libya until America went over there. That's just something to think about. I mean, it's like, damn, they ain't got to give us black people reparations in America, but damn, give us some place to live. Well, we ain't got to, black people shouldn't have to pay no taxes. How the fuck they got us paying taxes on the land that they took from us? How are you paying taxes on the land that they took from you? Give me my land. Give me some seeds. People today is smart enough to build their own. Uh, 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 and, and, and see, I'm not like, I be arguing with people all the time. Oh, get off the grid. Then no, you get your stupid ass off the grid. Just because you live in the forest don't mean you have to be off the grid. You have people that's building technology every day. Again, the dude that died in the Buffalo supermarket. That man that was murdered in that supermarket created a car that ran off of water. You don't have to live off the grid to live in the forest. Only a stupid motherfucker tell you that and try to make you believe that. So you think that you can't put solar panels in the forest? You can't clear a path to have electricity in the forest? You can't have Wi-Fi? Yes, you can. How do you apply to become a mod? Be consistent. Be loyal. As a matter of fact, is Mikey be in the building? Because I got to see your comment in order for me to give you back your wrench. And I'm actually looking right now. I haven't seen you yet. Shout out to Mikey B. You got people today that's creating like, I always want y'all to understand, man. And I say this over and over again. In the beginning, we wasn't running around prehistoric. When God put us on this, on this earth, we was more knowledgeable. We had more power than we have now. 
There's nothing new up under the sun. The technology that we have today, it's not new technology. It's been here since the beginning of time. The first time the earth was destroyed, the second time the earth was destroyed, the third time it was all been through nuclear weapons, through wars. It's always been wars. That's why you got to read some of them writings on the pyramids. And I know the pyramids ain't that old, but it's older than us. And it's showing you that the same technology was here. It was already here. The blueprints is already here. When people tell you to read a book, whose book is you reading? The book according to who? Whose lies are you reading? Whose truth are you reading? Somebody else's truth is not your truth. Read a book for what? Why don't you write one? You don't always have to read a book. Why don't you write one? Every day of your life, you write. It was written. How is this an active shooter in Maine? I guess we're going to get to that in a minute. Of course, we're going to get to that. They needed another distraction. Yeah, I just got to wait, though. Remember, I tell you, every year, it's a, it's a big celebrity that they take out. Every year there's a celebrity that got aired out or something had happened. Uh, it's, it's a big distraction. Just wait to, to Young Thug. Wait to his trial. Watch what's going on in this world when Young Thug is going to trial. Watch what's going on in this world when they finally decide that they're going to they're gonna lock Puff up. A witness is a witness. Watch what's going on and what happened when they decide that they're going to lock Puff up and throw him in jail. See, Puff is still doing his rituals, but at the same time, a sacrifice is a sacrifice. And if they got to use him for a distraction, even though they can let him go the same way they let R. Kelly go the first time. Yeah, the first time when it was actually footage of R. Kelly urinating on a little girl, they still let him go. Because R. R. Kelly was still participating with their evil rituals. Then as they start getting bigger, your head get big like Bill Cosby. Then you think that you above their rituals. You think the, that, that you above the Epstein parties. You see Fab finally decided to party with Puff. What was the reward in that? The rap game is over. All these rappers is going to YouTube now. COVID-19 came. And they locked everybody down. Nobody could perform. There was no shows. There was no concerts. These rappers was broke. <laughs> and us YouTubers, we was eating. Well, we was eating. Look what they doing to us now. It's time to knock out the middle class. And control who influence. They, they, they allowed to be an influencers. Y'all see the game? After this Pac story, I don't buy the shitty cuz story. What you think could actually unfold from the reason why our powerful brother Nipsey Hussle was doomed like that? Nipsey had too much influence. Nipsey had too much influence. And when I sat back and listened to certain celebrities talk about how they get to how they would get to LA, and when they get to LA, niggas like Big U and them gang niggas knew from the airport that they already landed. That's government. WAC 100 is government. Big U was government. The gang was extorting Nipsey Hussle after he died. Nip couldn't even rest in peace. I think I'm going to start bringing some more of that footage over to um, Rumble. Oh, the female cop with the fit and all. I got to look more into that because I'm going to definitely do that story. That's one of them stories I'm definitely looking into doing. But I need everybody that's watching me right now, man. Make sure that y'all go over and support my Snapbox TV. I need for the people that's... If y'all really, really watching me, go join my Patreon. Subscribe to my Patreon. There's going to be content over there that I can't put on YouTube. There's certain things that I can't talk about on YouTube. Because as we are live, the enemy is sitting there. They wait for me to say keywords and they flag me. So there's going to be content that's going to be over there that's not going to be here. Make sure y'all definitely support that Patreon. And all my other, my Raw and Uncut, my Real Topics for her song, when you go to my channel, 
description where the channels is at. Subscribe to all of my channels because randomly now I'm going to start posting videos with different content on my own other pages because the reality of it is the game is rigged. And the truth of the matter is if I'm going to do a live for two or three hours up here and motherfuckers ain't going to hit the like button and the super chat ain't looking right because the reality of it is if I get $100 to $200 in my super chat, YouTube's taking 60% of it. If my, guy, if my cash app ain't popping, it's like, what's the point? Because every time I go live, they factory reset my shit and adjust it so I can get less and less views. They trying to fade me out like they did Sonetta. They trying to fade me. Well, yeah, they definitely did Sonetta dirty. Uh, and some of these other channels that was big channels when I was a little channel. This is what they do. They give you 15 minutes of fame, but I only get better with time. Read that story. She's from Yonkers. I'm going to definitely do something on that story for y'all. What I'm looking for, though, on some real shit, if you have editing skills and you nice at editing, I want to see you remix some of my videos. Send it to me in my DM on Instagram. And if you nice and you got the skills and you got what it takes, you could be a part of my platform. I'm sick and tired of waiting for niggas around me to do what I'm giving them assignments to do. If you nice with designing clothes and you think that you could design some shit that you know highs like to wear and it's going to look good, look good. On this screen, make sure you hit me up in my DM. But if you're looking to work for me, you definitely got to be a part of my Patreon. If you got an intro that sounds anything dope like Lord I Kim, Stay Woke or Say Less or, or Black Lives Don't Matter, like some, some dope music that I, can, that I can play without a copyright. If you can make me an intro to my pre-recordings as well as my lives, and the shit is fire. Make sure you be part of my Patreon and subscribe to all my pages. If you are talented, I'm looking for new talent. I'm looking for new content creators. Like I'm talking up here for two or three hours. Now, just imagine if Hassan Campbell was actually sitting on the screen and I was talking to three or four people like Corey Holcomb, where we could converse back and forth and have a good dialogue with each other. See, when we can do shit like that, the platform can elevate and we can create other content creators. Remember something. InfoMods used to have me on his platform and I had Charleston White on my platform in the past, pushing him. Some of these new up-and-comers, I done pushed a lot of niggas, man, on my platform. If I made them niggas, I could make a new, a new one of them. But you just got to have the talent. So if you a clothing designer and you nice, you make logos, you nice, if you think that you could take a Hassan Campbell thumbnail off of my channel and send it to me like, nah, replace it with this thumbnail, this thumbnail right here is hot, and you want to be a part of my platform, hit me up in my DM. Now nah, the world don't need another rapper. I'm tired of them niggas. Like, really, I'm tired of them. And most of these niggas is egotistical. I kill you, I shoot you. Can you pay a bill, my nigga? On some real shit. And I love rap, but at the same time, like, yo, dogs, can you can you pay a bill? Can you pay a bill? The world don't need another rapper. Not if you're going to use your voice for evil. And it don't even make any sense. How you got a gun and you broke? Hello? How do you have a gun and you're broke? You went outside with the blicky? And you came back in the house with an attitude? Christopher Columbus, he went outside with his blicky. And when he came back to Europe, and France and all the rest of that shit, he had America with Indian heads in his bag. How you got a gun and you broke? 
Your master done showed you what to do with it, my nigga. You broke? Oh, right. You looking for the rap game to put you on, bitch ass nigga. Shut up. I respect these rappers. They don't respect me and I don't respect them neither. Let's keep it that way. But shout out to the rappers I do rock with. Of course, how they not built the same? How are they not built the same when that's all they talk about? I don't go to sleep and waking up thinking about killing somebody. The only reason why I go to sleep and wake up thinking about killing somebody is because I know somebody's trying to kill me. How you turn on your TV, subscribe to somebody, and then tell yourself, I hate that nigga right there, but watch every video. Nigga, your mama raised a nutcase. Damn, why is it that I cannot see my comment section? Nah, I ain't Y'all niggas just don't like the truth. I'm not bugging. Y'all don't like the truth. Everybody in the hood on the same type of time. Niggas is ignorant. You niggas is the type of niggas, if I give you some money, you're going to buy a Benz and you're going to park it in front of a tenement building. Me, I'm the nigga that'll buy the Ford Explorer. I was driving a Ford Explorer through the hood back in the days. I could have bought the Benz. I wouldn't have got the Mitsubishi. I was driving the Dodge Durango. I knew not to live above my means because I knew I wanted something in life. I knew I was saving for something greater. You niggas ain't saving for shit. Your best outfit is going to be spent. You going to wear your best outfit standing on the same corner around the same niggas. And then the funny part about it is the same niggas that you you hanging out around, they don't like the fact that you coming out there dressing fly with not even a dollar in your pocket. We just two different types of niggas. I'm sorry. You can look at me right now and see me building something for myself. When you listen to these niggas' raps, they still talking about what they did back in <laughs> when, 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 when Ronald Reagan was president. These niggas is rapping about what they did when Ronald Reagan was president. Are you shitting me? Y'all niggas are still talking about when John Gotti was in the streets? And you would hear about Staten Island rappers if Wu Tang would actually push the kids' music and not hating. You a bird. Cold as ice, you said I'm a bird. I like being a bird. I'm the best and the greatest bird you've ever seen in your motherfucking life. I'm so fly of a bird. When this live goes off, nine times out of ten, this live probably will have like 20 or 30,000 views already. Consistently, we'd have four and five, in between four and five, thousands of people lined up to see this bird. And you one of the main motherfuckers that's lining up to see this bird. But something that I said... Something that I said in this live irritated the shit out of you. <laughs> sometimes it's good. It's fun to address these clowns. Sometimes you got to address these clowns. It's fun. Because sometimes y'all got to really, really see the sneaky people in the comment section trying to sneak this. You're a bird. Nigga, you, so you think I'm a bird. It's 10 o'clock. It's nighttime. Most men got a fat, juicy ass, especially black men. You got a fat, juicy ass in the room. I don't care if it's Latino, Dominican, whatever it is. You got a fat ass and some titties in the room. But you watching Hassan Campbell calling me a bird. 
instead of being in there with your bum bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Hey, come on, man. But you watching me. I always feel yo with your old looking ass. <laughs> That's all right. I look like Bimmy. I'm cool with that. I'm old. All my life, I was a handsome dude. If I'm starting to look like an old man, and I'm starting to look fuck, I'm cool with it, nigga. But what I don't look like is a sucker. You know what a sucker look like? Just go through Instagram and look at all these 40 and 50-year-old niggas wearing a best outfit, standing on the same block, rapping. Like, What? Yeah, you see that side eye? Yeah, I know. Yo, yeah, you go outside. Your girl on the phone. Yeah, where that bitch ass nigga at? Oh, he in the studio with 30 niggas. Could be for a beat. Rapping off of somebody else's famous beat. YouTube on niggas monetize they shit. Get the fuck out of here. Like, stop it, man. When I'm down, I'm trying to leave something behind to my kids. Niggas, you can't leave those fucking corny ass rap to your children. Monty 312, yo, how's you the greatest to ever do this? Don't care what nobody say. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. They stop playing, man. DJ Envy is snitching. But who cares? Because DJ Envy is not from the streets. And more and more people of today's time is turning their back on the streets. You know why nobody cares about snitching? I'm going to tell you why nobody cares about snitching. Nobody cares about snitching because there's no integrity in being a fucking gangster. Gangsters used to take care of the community. Not anymore. They destroy it. There's no integrity in the hood no more. Now you just got real niggas and bad bitches. That was one of my best videos that I ever did. All those videos is gone. I think I have to do it again. The hood is filled and consists with real niggas and bad bitches. That's what we, we, we reduced to. Regular right people don't like that shit no more. And the internet is filled with low self-esteem. I wish I would put makeup under my eyes. These bags gonna stay here. So I can make myself look anything other than what the fuck I've been through in life. I'm good with it. I still get my balls licked at night. What you eat don't make me shit. I'm not with pretending. Bitches running around 45 years old talking about don't call me grandma, I'm gamma. What? Grown ass men on the internet talking about don't call me OG. Because I'm going to be fucking the same bitches you fucking what? That's what you get in the hood. You can have the hood. When I go back to the hood, I want y'all to understand the thoughts. It's like, y'all, like, you know, good's the animal, right? When he be sitting up there rapping. And then he tell you this is the shit that be going through my mind when y'all niggas be when I when, when when I be standing in the hood, the shit that be going through my my mind, I am disgusted. I don't feel this badge of honor that these niggas be selling y'all when I go back to the hood. I was just on the block, on Cortland Ave with my brother T Mac. I'm not happy to be on the block. I'm standing outside and the police standing on the corner 158 where we be at. Right on the corner, looking intimidating with the arms folded, just standing. Now, every car that goes to the light now, because now there's a light there. Every car that's go that goes to the light, they watching you. So now they looking to see what your body language is going to be because you see the police with a comb in the middle of the fucking block 
and you coming dead directly towards them. You don't even know why they're standing there. Now, if you from the hood and you know that every time you have seen police in the last 30 or 40 years of your life, 50 years of your life, it hasn't been good for black people. Automatically, your body language is going to show some type of nervousness. It's not that you're doing something wrong. We just realize whenever they randomly feel like it, somebody ends up dead. So that's a nervousness that's going to always be there. Then I'm standing there talking to one of the brothers. It's my age. A little bit younger. Sit up there talking about, yeah, I was out here the other night. They ran up on me. Wanted to know what was up under my hoodie. Like, I'm too old to go through that. I'm too grown. I don't have it in me to let a police officer just walk up to me in a neighborhood where we was raised in and then tell me that I must pull up my shirt or put my hands behind my back because he want to know what's up under my shirt in a neighborhood in an environment where they done created these 3D printing shits where now these young boys are dealing with technology and they printing out their own fucking guns. I'll be damned if I'm going to sit up there and wait for a police officer to keep me alive. I'm not waiting for Officer Foley to come take me to the hospital and pull nine bullets out of my belly. Fuck, I look like 50 cent. Death by design is exactly what it is. I'll be sitting in the courtroom with the judge giving me a bail before I'll be sitting up there letting Brenda's baby pop me. That's why I'll be laughing at niggas talking about I'm outside. If you outside, you ain't if you ain't got your gun on you, nigga, you're not outside. And I'm mainly talking to niggas in New York where you can't have a gun. Fuck all that bullshit. If you ain't got your gun on you, everywhere you go in those in the streets of New York, you ain't outside, my nigga. You ain't playing on the same type of time that that L niggas is playing on. Y'all niggas can say whatever y'all want to say about me, but you ain't never seen no, nobody beat me up the way niggas did Jim Jones. You ain't seen a, a nigga ever get on the internet and say, y'all watch Hassan Campbell every day. These are his rings, his bracelets. You will never see a nigga on the internet advertising my diamond bracelet. You're not going to see it. You're not. My diamond bracelet and my ring, you are not going to see that. You're not going to see that. You know what I feel like as a man if I got to call niggas every time I go outside? Zip with the drip is 40, bragging about a murder he committed at 15 and that he did 18 years in jail. I could tell you, and pretty soon I might get into some of my jail stories, but my best years, I didn't have way better years in jail. You know, the, the one, one conversation me and Mano did have, when I asked him about why he didn't talk about none of his stories, it's like, yo... Mano came home from jail fucking bitches like Little Kim. And these industry chicks. Niggas is coming home still talking about the last 18 years in jail because they ain't got no fucking life. Every day is a new chapter in your book. My advice to Zip, you know, live life. Live life. Travel a little bit. Enjoy life. Tell people about how, how your state was at this hotel and how you, you you got a chance to get on an airplane and go to whatever different states. Live life, man. Because that shit is whack. And talking about who you killed 20 years ago and talking about jail you did 20 years ago, your, 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 your platform is never going to grow. That's my advice to any up-and-coming YouTube. Your platform is never going to grow. Why you think you see these niggas, these jail niggas, every single day not growing? They don't even know how to get into good jail stories. I done seen some jail channels like 1090 Jake. He started off telling jail stories just like the other white boy. I forget his, I forget his page. Had dope content. 
they pages got real, real big because they was teaching you and telling you like d dope stories that was entertaining. These niggas all they do is glorify themselves and they leave up the they leave out the stories of when they got beat up. All this, that's that's all these niggas is doing, leaving out the stories of when they get but they got beat up and beefing back and forth. And YouTube's not even playing no more. My advice to any of you niggas that's on YouTube right now, if y'all paying attention, YouTube is snatching so many dudes' pages and monetization. So y'all go ahead and have a legacy of this videos on your page. But sooner or later, what you better understand is, is YouTube is cutting back on YouTubers. And they cutting back on that check. So you already got videos where you dissing mad people and you breaking the community guidelines. By antagonizing and bullying and harassing. And sometimes YouTube will leave those videos up there. When people flag it, they'll leave it. But they're going to come back and get it another day because they know that you're breaking the rules. And then you're going to wake up and you're going to see. And in days to come, a million YouTubers got their pink slip. And it's going to be easy for YouTube to get rid of you because you're breaking the guidelines. Cynthia G lost her monetization just recently from what I'm hearing. That shit ain't no joke. When you're able to work at home, that's a blessing. When you are able to work at home and make your own hours and get up and go to sleep whenever you want to, that's a blessing. That shit you niggas is doing working 40 hours, that's slavery. That's modern day slavery. You want a new plantation called work. Yeah, why is everybody calling me while I'm live? She was promoting racism highs. Well, she got what she was looking for. She got what she was looking for. But I don't see what's wrong with her promoting racism. Everybody else do it. I'm not mad at racist people. I like and appreciate racist people. I appreciate them. I want to know that you don't like me. I want more racist people to be more racist so that the world can understand that everybody, everything ain't sweet. Y'all not mad at these rappers for making songs talking about killing your nieces and nephews, but you mad at somebody for being racist? Make that make sense to me. Damn, do rad too tight. Please, anybody. Make that make sense to me. Out of the racist. For being racist. But you're not mad at the radio stations. For, for promoting black on black crime. On oh, gang. Make that make sense. So I guess I got to figure out, right? So what we're going to do is, right? Because everybody's trying to get in contact with me. So what we're going to do is, we're going to find out what's going on with this mass shooting and take a little break. And what we're going to do is, we're going to we gonna go back live again, like let's say 11.30. So that'll give me enough time to do my homework. And we're going to go live again at 11.30. We're going to see what's going on with this mass shooting. And, and I'll get right back at y'all. Hit that like button, hit that share button, hit that subscribe button. When you leave this live, I want y'all to come back in like five minutes later. Let's see how many people really watch this live and put it in the comment section. How many people really watch this live? We out.